can't escape. I, I like the guys that are sitting in the back. Easy exit. You got to get out of here, right? You know, talk's horrible and bail. <laughs> ah, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I am uh, David Porter, also known as a Big Happy Face. So I've got the shirt. This is the point, right? So you can recognize me. Hey, this guy's a Big Happy Face. I usually have a smile. I hope you have a smile, especially after this talk, and uh, that everything is, uh, you know, is copacetic. Uh, hopefully, uh, I have, uh, you know, something to to uh, to share with you, uh, and you know, inspire you to, to leverage uh, something like varnish a little bit more. Um, I have quite a few more. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, the talk, right? Varnish and BCL beyond copy and paste from the internet. I think that. Uh, that's the, the thing about varnish, uh, as, as I had heard earlier, it's a lifesaver, and I think that it, that's, it's great, right? Varnish is really sweet, especially from the, the caching aspect. Uh, I think that's why people adopt it most often, is for performance, uh, and I think that that totally makes sense. It, it's a pretty turnkey uh, you know, solution where you can just set it up in front of anything and make it so much faster, and it works really well. But I think that that's, uh, that, that's probably some of the limitations, especially from a Drupal perspective, is that, uh, a lot of people will, will put it up and they'll, they'll get it in front and they get the performance out of it and then they walk away, right? Um, we were having a discussion earlier about solar and how solar is kind of a similar thing, right? We, you plug it in and it starts to solve your problems for search. But is it really, uh, you know, does anybody ever go uh, beyond uh, just the initial implementation and all that? So uh, that's, that's really what, uh, you know, what, what I want to talk about today is a little bit of a deeper dive into a technology. If something solves something, like a great uh, problem for you, right? And you, you know, it becomes a lifesaver. Wouldn't you want to know more about it? Wouldn't you want to do more with it? And so uh, that's that's really what I want to uh, talk about today. Uh, first thing I want to talk about uh, is uh, I really want to thank you all. This turnout's really great. Uh, th this is really neat, and I uh, I think that this will be a lot of fun. Um, I am going to uh, ask you in advance to please review the session and all of the other ones that you've been to. I think that uh, there's a uh, a lot of value in that. Even if you don't leave any comments, just the the ratings would be would be satisfactory. It takes you just a couple minutes. Um, so let's get started. Uh, the agenda it, it's going to be pretty, you know, uh, pretty dynamic. Uh, first, I'm going to just you know really talk about uh, you know this and the schmooze with you guys a little bit. Talk you know ask some questions, right? Kind of get a feel of the the room so we all have an understanding of uh, kind of uh, what our experience level is and what we're going to kind of get out of it. Um, I'm going to set a timer on my phone to keep me honest. So if you hear it's annoying, sorry, uh, but I'm you know I'll try to keep it going. Uh, the next thing after that is I'll, I'll talk about uh, this uh, a very simple uh, uh, Vagrant-based uh, starter repo for Varnish that uh, has an example of uh, edge side includes has an example of a Varnish test. It's a uh, it's multi-machine, so you have like a back end and a front end, and so it's just a, a, a way for you to kind of uh, tinker and experiment. I didn't give you anything very advanced, but that's by design because I want you to go do it on your own instead of me just giving you some kind of boilerplate that you copy and paste from the internet. <laughs> okay, so uh, after that, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, you know, do a little bit of the behind the scenes for stuff that I've done for my company, uh, some real world uh, VCL and varnish test examples. Uh, in the title and even in the description, I don't talk too much about varnish test, but I think it's important to call out now that I'm a huge, huge advocate of testing, um, and uh, it is my opinion, my opinion, that uh, as a professional developer, you should be writing tests, right? Because the fact is, that way you can uh, verify your work, right? There's some kind of validation instead of just saying, yeah, it's done, enjoy, right? And so tests help prove that, and uh, when it comes to varnish, as you start to get a little bit more uh, advanced, uh, I think you'll be truly amazed at uh, what varnish tests can provide, especially when it comes to uh, simulating uh, every aspect uh, that, that is important to think about in varnish. And then uh, lastly, we'll do Q&A. Now, that, that's traditional uh, you know, Q&A at the end. However, if there's a question, just stop me and I will totally answer it, and I will probably go off on a tangent talking about it. Did you have one? Oh, sorry, no. Anyway, uh, so uh, uh, without further ado, uh, that's oh, well, actually we'll stick to the uh, to the schmoozing. So, who here uses varnish? <laughs> Excellent, right? Okay. So, um, who uses varnish 
for caching. OK. Who uses varnish for something else? Excellent, excellent. Uh, uh, may I ask what? A simple description? Excellent. Yeah, okay, so different backends, route it, okay, that makes perfect sense. And it works out pretty well for that, I, I suspect, right? Awesome. I'm, 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 I'll actually show uh, an example of how to do that and uh, some testing behind it as well to give you an example of that. Um, uh, there's another hand over here. Okay. Um, uh, by like path, by like yeah, URL. Well, yeah, by path, but um, yeah, different, different types of methods. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, it's one URL essentially. Okay, I, I, I totally know how that goes. That's awesome. Uh, uh, others. Okay, yeah. So grace mode. I got you. Okay, and uh, yeah, just really leveraging that cache, and that way, you know, you can uh, just have it served from cache and you can do all the fun in the back end, nobody will really actually know. Okay, uh, any, anything else? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Dude. Oh. Uh, and a uh, version of Varnish? I'm kind of curious. So four. Okay. Hey, at least you're at the latest. That's, that's, uh, that's great. Um, how many lines of Varnish test? Ah, uh, okay. So, okay, that's, uh, so that's my next question. Who here has heard of or used Varnish test? There he is. <laughs> Me too. And so that, and I think that ultimately this talk might seem to transform into this like big varnish test, you know, you know, proselytizing and it, it is, and, and you'll see why. But um, that's great. I, I think this is a, an amazing uh, diversity of use cases and I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that, that, that many of you have stepped beyond the bounds of just kind of just the, the out of the box, copy and paste the VCL from Lullabot or something and just go, right? And so uh, that, that, that's gonna be uh, pretty cool. Um, so for me, uh, a little bit of background uh, briefly. Uh, again, my name is David Porter. I'm, I'm from San Antonio, uh, Texas. Uh, originally born in Texas, but not in San Antonio. I work for a Rackspace Hosting. Anybody ever use or heard of it? Cool. Yeah, you've heard of it? Cool. Yeah, the one guy. Uh, um, and so uh, at, at Rackspace, uh, we have a, a variety of, of websites, uh, kind of like a, a, as others had described. Uh, we have multiple backends, we've got a lot of different infrastructure. Um, you know, we dog food a lot, and so from a dedicated hosting perspective, I've got all kinds of uh, uh, technology in the stack. And so uh, where, when Varnish came into uh, to play, eventually we, uh, initially we brought it in just to, uh, to do caching and performance, right? We wanted to have that, that real fast response. We wanted to, you know, just take the load off the databases. And, uh, you know, the standard reasons. At the time, we had a series of, of F5 uh, load balancers in the mix. And uh, it, those were maintained by a network security team that uh, was not part of my team. And uh, we had to interface with them via tickets. And if we ever wanted to have any kind of change to traffic routing or anything like that, standard load balancer kind of uh, concerns, we had to communicate it through a ticket and hope that somebody digested it well. And then it would be just like a random security tech in the middle of the night would Try to interpret what I asked for. And then, uh, you know, you talked about a 4,000 line VCL. This was like an 8,000 line config of copy and paste of whole chunks, right? That was their versioning system, right? Which would be like, oh, version eight, right? <laughs> copy the whole thing, version eight, right? And so there was no way of validating it. If something went down, you know, we were literally killing, you know, operating on our, uh, our, our traffic managers, and it just, it wasn't sustainable. 
And it didn't give us the ability to have any kind of influence. We didn't have any version control. And so I um, had this idea that we could do it all with varnish. It all seemed to make sense. And so uh, I, I ended up uh, implementing a, a solution uh, that uh, uses Puppet, the templating engine in Puppet, to yield uh, VCL. And uh, it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, but the, the coolest thing about it is that I, I built this great testing you know, I, I didn't build Varnish tests, but I just built this a suite of tests. And so everything that we needed to do, I've got a test to support it. And, and, it, and it goes from everything from traffic routing, uh, you know, based on URL or based on uh, the path, right? But we also manipulate requests. We strip headers. We have special conditions for certain headers. We've got, you know, uh, means of optimizing cache. And so uh, that has proven to be just completely invaluable. Now I, I know that everything is just rock solid. I've got tests that can prove it. And, and now uh, traffic routing, caching, all of that, it's like the last of our concerns. I fight more with CSS than I do with Varnish. Okay, and I mean, it, and then again, CSS never ends. So, um, and so with that, um, we'll start getting into uh, the actual uh, starter repo. Now, um, the repo itself is a little bit uh, more focused on, on ESI originally. Uh, and so uh, don't let that, be the, the main focus. Um, I, 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 any of you use uh, edge side includes? Anyway? Yeah, excellent. Okay, um, and so uh, th th I wanted to really kind of demonstrate that uh, for those that haven't uh, really used it. Um, I think it's it, it's a neat technology. I think that the use cases are going to be pretty basic, and so uh, you know, don't. If this is not like I said an ESA talk, um, but uh, we'll we'll go into that. Um, I have a very simple VCL that just has some you know some different uh, uh, rules for, uh, for caching, as an example. Um, and uh, the actual Vagrant uh, file lists uh, two different machines, a back end and an edge. And so that works out uh, pretty well. Also, uh, just so you know, guys, it's, there's only six slides. This is not a slide heavy talk. So once I leave the slides, it might not actually go back. This is going to be pretty meat, meaty, hands-on kind of a talk. So here is the actual uh, uh, repo. Um, I, I've blown it all up. Uh, it's a real simple uh, setup that gives you this pretty cool page um, here of, uh, let's see here, let me grab this. Oh, it's hanging. I should put it behind varnish. Let's see if I'm on it. that one's working. while we wait. Um, very simple uh, PHP file here that uh, demonstrates some of the, uh, what? Let's see. Let me see if we can catch up with it. We're doing it live, guys. We're doing it live. Yeah, you too? Okay. So everybody's on it. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, if you're tweeting good things, don't stop, right? Just keep it going, right? Uh, uh, well, so luckily, I've got the code right here. So uh, the examples that I wanted to show as far as ESI was concerned, um, here you have the special, uh, you know, uh, comment-based notation for um, – having a kind of a selective ESI. Uh, the example here is that um, if you have ESI enabled, right, I will include the contents of the CSS file. And so uh, if not, um, if I am behind ESI, I'll, I'll actually strip this out. And, and the, the reason for that uh, is, um, you know, to prevent an additional request. Um, the idea is that if I have ESI included, I can actually just front load all the CSS up front. That way I can save that additional request and you should see uh, an additional performance boost in terms of uh, overall number of requests. Um, also, further down, I've got just a real simple little uh, alert uh, as a means of just kind of identifying whether or not you're actually behind ESI. In a moment here, hopefully. Oh, it might be coming back up. There it is, okay. Uh, let's see. 
So here, come back, maybe. Come on. This one is an example on port 81 or 8081 of uh, what it looks like actually behind ESI. Here you'll see, hey, you know, I'm behind ESI. Uh, here you'll see that it's not. Um, the, uh, you'll see the different requests that are loading, uh, namely the, the actual bootstrap CSS file, right? And so that would load as you would expect it to uh, versus the, the one behind Varnish, uh, which would actually never load it. It actually gets, uh, you know, included at the edge, right? The edge side include, and that's, and that's how that would work. Um, Let's see here. Let's see, get this to load. I think, uh, so uh, as an example of the kind of uh, uh, load that you would see on, uh, on a page and why you might actually want to uh, uh, cache it, uh, what I'm doing is I'm loading uh, this random uh, cat fact. You know, anybody ever use the uh, cat facts API? It's pretty fun, right? It just gives you a random cat fact. Uh, and that's unfortunately, and that's, uh, I think that that's what actually is holding up is that back end request. We've got these, uh, network issues that we're describing, right? And so it's not able to actually complete that request. And it's, it's unfortunate. But um, uh, moving on, uh, that's really the, you know, uh, an example of what edge side includes would, uh, you know, would entail. Um, let's see here. And now this should be a cache request. But it's still gonna, it's, no, it's just hanging. Hook it up with ah, it's not through the tether. We're doing it live. Okay, so uh, that's really a, a kind of what what covers on the the ESI aspect. Um, it, 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 you know, while we wait for the internet to come back, uh, does anybody have any questions? Any uh, uh, thoughts on this? You, would you really want to see a cat fact? You disappointed? There's no cat facts here. I am. I know. Yeah, please. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, uh, this particular tag, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't, um, it, it, you know, technically wouldn't be valid. I, I mean, especially for like X HTML, right? Depending, it's really all about the doc type. Uh, but I mean, I'm trying to, it's hard enough to get people to write valid HTML in the first place, right? And so, um, you know, at least we have one that, uh, you know, that, that would be helpful. Um, let's see if we're back yet. Let's turn it off. Too bad, folks. Too bad. Okay, so that is the actual uh, the ESI portion of that. Uh, I mean, and, and it's just really about uh, optimizing output. Uh, uh, but once it comes back and I'm able actually to get a cached uh, response, uh, I'll, I have a, a Apache Bench uh, run that I can actually show the difference in the response times and the performance on, and that's just really the result of caching. Um, and so that's really uh, kind of the, the the foundation of that. But while while we're waiting, we'll actually go in here and look at a little bit at the uh, the VCL behind it. So, uh, very uh, a typical a back end, right? Which would be the uh, the web back end uh, machine that's uh, coming up from Vagrant. Uh, what I'm doing here is in the receive portion. I'm actually unsetting the cookie, and that makes it uh, able to be cached. That's what the thing about Varnish, right? Is that if there's any kind of cookies, it won't cache a response because it sees that as being unique, right? A, a cookie is kind of input. And so uh, uh, it, it's you know essentially the same as saying having like a query parameter or some kind of uh, user source input. Uh, here I'm checking uh, to see if I've got any kind of uh, you know uh, query string of a certain value, and if I do, that I'll actually set a different TTL than the standard TTL. And then in the delivery, I'm able to set this X cache header depending on whether or not there is a, a cache hit, and that's. That's, that's, you know, it's helpful to know whether or not you're even getting a cache hit or not, right? So it's pretty standard practice. Um, one of the cool things that, uh, that I've done in the past is not only, you know, do we add headers, but it's also nice to, to strip headers. For instance, uh, a, a common practice will be, you know, do you even want to expose whether or not you're on Drupal? So you can strip those headers, like the generator out. Uh, a lot of times people will, um, may not configure uh, their Apache backends, for instance, 
to uh, uh, turn off the server tokens. You can use uh, Varnish to strip that stuff out for types of like you know security concerns and all that. And so that's that's what's uh, it's extremely helpful for uh, manipulating uh, requests coming in, responses going out, and all those uh, all those uh, the uh, needs that you may have, especially from a security related uh, posture. Um, to test this cache, here's the test. So, uh, Varnish test is super slick, okay? First thing you can do is you can fake a server, fake a backend, and you can describe the different types of responses that will come in in sequence, and you can even um, do, a, I, don't, I don't have an example here, but I'll, I'll show you others later, where you can you know, describe the expectation of the kind of response uh, th that, uh, I'm sorry, the request that will actually come to the back end. So a lot of times what people can do is they can manipulate the request coming in, change it somehow, right? Strip cookies, do something. And then uh, with uh, Varnish test, you can actually have the server verify that it has been manipulated in the way that you expect, which makes it very, very uh, convenient. Uh, next, you can describe BCL in line, which is cool. Um, uh, in, in a moment here, I'll, I'll show you how you can actually use VCL's uh, include syntax, just your standard you know, file include, and, and so that you can actually load your VCL into a test, your actual final VCL. Um, that makes it very, very uh, helpful. Uh, this is just the same VCL that you would see otherwise. And then lastly, uh, you can uh, simulate the clients and the actual requests, and you know, that they will do this request and that they will expect certain things, uh, you know, in, in the response. Uh, like in, in this case, uh, it's just two simple client requests. The first one will we'll hit it, it will expect an uncached, you know, uh, response, and that it's a 200. And then the second request, it should be cached, and so you should get, you can expect for xcache to be a, a hit. And so uh, let's actually go and just look at uh, demoing that right now. Boom. That's it, test ran. So just to prove that there is actually something going on. Oh, let me turn around. Bam. Okay, so uh, there you'll see that I, that I have a, the failed test. Just to run it again, so you see that it's okay. Now the output of varnish test is ridiculous, okay? It is really, really, really verbose. However, um, while that may be a little uh, confusing, what you'll see is that it actually shows the compiled VCL up front. It will tell you that it's starting. It gives you all the debug about the addresses that it's binded to, and all the ports and all that good stuff. It then shows the incoming request headers and all the information about it. Then here, at some point, you'll, you'll see that the first test, the expect, bam, we've got a match, everything is gravy. We go further, we do the second request, oh, that failed. And then it explodes into this massive, like, oh, you know, something happened, what's up? And so, uh, most often, uh, you know, when you actually are developing tests, you're gonna scroll to about the midpoint of where that, that test was, just to be like, hey, you know, what actually happened, you know? Here it is, and so uh, those will be uh, uh, you know, super helpful. But you know, the tests run fast. It's easy to describe exactly what's happening and uh, you know, start to debug it and, send, and start to develop from there. Let's see here. Oh, it looks like the internet's back. It is. All right, cats sleep for 16 to 18 hours per day. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that every time I reload this, this is bad. No, it's another random cat fact, but if I hit here, but now I get the super fast load. And you'll see the difference in between the two. Bootstrap's loading here, it's not loading there, and that's because it's actually inlined in my big blap of response here. Right. And that's, that's convenient to save an additional request. If anybody uses uh, something like uh, Gone Black. So um, let's see, I, I think I have uh, Apache Bench here. Anybody use Apache Bench for benchmarking this stuff? Yeah, cool, all right, good. Professional users, I like it. Boom, 
that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the varnish back end. That's on port 8081, of course. If I switch it over, it takes longer. And so, uh, you know, that, that's the, the neat thing about verifying the types of requests. And what, what I've also noticed is that um, it describes that these are like actually like failed requests when they're not really not. I mean, it's, yeah, at this point, you're really at the, at the mercy of cat facts, right? And so you don't really want to be there, right? It's probably better to just, you know, one can cat fact, you know, every request is probably fine, right, for every like 10 minutes or so. So that's really uh, the, 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 the meat of, uh, yikes, Chrome is not having it, sorry. Um, so uh, back to the, the VCL and the VC uh, varnish test. Uh, any questions so far on, on the test? Any kind of uh, concerns? Anybody excited? Yeah, please. Um, I would assume so. I don't know that um, I don't know that they've made many changes to varnish tests per se, uh, because it all of varnish itself is really written centered around varnish test. Um, but as far as varnish five, I, I think that they just added more more tooling and stuff like that, right, and refined it and stuff. Um, I, I haven't read that much about it. I'm still in, I'm still in four. <laughs> um, but no, that's, that's a good question. I'm, I'm, I'm super, uh, I'm super uh, interested to know myself. I would hope that they would promote the testing more, right, because it seems to look like it's a little bit more of an internal tool. And so, um, you know, but, but, you know, you can use it too, and it comes out of the box. And, and so uh, that's really one of the, the things I want to get back to is just that, you know, running it is just running varnish tests, right, and just pointing it to a file, right? So it's, it's pretty simple to write and author and, and, and move along. Uh, any, any other questions so far? Any, um, any concerns? Yeah, please. It's a great question. And so uh, that, that kind of comes back to what I was describing about uh, using uh, Puppet's templating engine. Uh, so what I can do is I've got, uh, and, and I'll show you here just in a minute, but basically the way I, I, I work it is I've got all of the rules defined in a, a, a VCL, and then I include those rules after I've defined the back ends. And so that I can have different back ends for different environments. And so if I won't, you know, for testing purposes, I, since you can simulate back, you know, servers and you can simulate clients, I don't really need like, you know, a production configuration of, of like actual production IPs, right? And so um, by using that templating engine, I can just inject, you know, just standard, you know, whatever local ones and test the actual flow, all, you know, everything operates the way I expect without actually needing it. But I, I could run it in, in production. Uh, the only difference is that um, the back ends that would be defined would be actual production machines, and so it might get weird, you know. Um, and, and I think that that's, how, that's actually a good uh, opportunity to come back to this test and describe how, right here, how the, you know, you've got actually got these kind of like these variables. And this is what really kind of supports the testing. Um, so I've got a server that I've defined, it's called S1, you, you know, arbitrarily named. But it knows to provide this dynamic port and, and address, and so I would link it to it. Does that make sense? And so it, it, the, the test actually facilitates its own kind of a sandboxing, as it would be. Um, but if I'm writing VCL and I've got the 4,000 line monolithic VCL, how do I break it up to where I can take the chunks, the, the actual logic that I need, how do I inject that into something like this, test it using these, you know, artificial uh, back ends and clients. And so that's, uh, I might as well just go ahead and skip over and show you. So um, this test is for VWO frame options. Is anybody familiar with VWO at all? Okay, uh, VWO is, uh, stands for Visual Website Optimizer. It's a third party service. They do uh, optimization services like uh, A-B testing, uh, you know, uh, heat mapping, all this, all this cool stuff, right? Um, we don't want to get click jacked, okay? You guys familiar with click jacking, right? Where somebody will take your website and they will put it in an iframe and actually like say overlay, uh, 
text fields or something like that to make it look like you're actually logging into something, but you're actually logging into their form. And something like that we call click jacking. Um, so we have, uh, there's a, there's this uh, header that you can specify, you know, uh, X frame options, and you can describe whether or not um, a browser will allow your site to be loaded via an iframe or any kind of frame, right? And so as long as it's from the same origin, they've got matching names, then you could load it, or you can actually just say like, no, no there's no way. So by default, we want to always have the same origin. That way, you know, we can load it into an iframe, but others can't. So uh, VWO offers uh, this heat mapping, right? But they have to load the website inside of an iframe to do the overlay of, of the heat map for where people are clicking. So this server, what this does here is it's going to repeat four different requests, and it's always going to specify this same origin. But that's just the back end, mind you. The back, back end is always going to be, you know, have the secure configuration. Here, I've got all these different uh, directors, right, and, uh, and, and all their, their load balancing configurations, and I can assign the back ends, et cetera. And then here is where I load in my default body that I had mentioned. This is actually the, the, my VCL. I just load it in, but, uh, you know, uh, but because I can simulate varnish, I just, you know, I, I fake everything except for my, you know, my pay code. What, uh, what we've done is we have a, a special rule that says if you are coming from VWO as your referrer, we will, Varnish will then strip out that X frame options header so that it can be, that our website can actually be loaded and then you can see the click map, right? Or, or the, you know, the, the heat maps. And so this test basically does that. The first request comes in, we're looking for rackspace.com and I'm expecting that I'm not only gonna get 200, but I'm gonna have the same origin response. Later, if somebody comes in, but the referrer has vwo.com in it, I'm expecting that now this option, this, this uh, header is undefined. And so that test runs, and, and that's how I'm able to, to verify it. And then I'm also able to set up all kinds of weird scenarios, like what if it's coming from this weird, super weird URL here, right? Is it, am I searching for just vwo? I, you know, based on the rules of how I'm matching, where it's coming from, et cetera, I can expect that it's undefined. Same thing here, if it's the full name, it says just vwo.com. And so these tests are able to verify that Varnish is doing what it expects, uh, or what we expect it to do. Um, it, it, was, it, it was fun because, uh, you know, we have a, a testing manager and he had VWO set up and he was just, I can't see the click maps, you know, and we needed a solution, right? But, we, you know, we wanted a secure site. And so there it is, Varnish to the rescue, right? Tested, verified, delivered, done, right? And so that was fun. Um, let's see here. Uh, any other questions around that? Any ideas? Anybody uh, starting to get the noodle going? No? Yeah, please. Okay. Okay. That client, yeah, that, that yeah, client, because so they've got that header set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And that, and that would apply to everybody? No, no, I mean, you could strip the, the do not track header from the client, but... Um, being that Google Analytics is a client side uh, library, right? Um, I mean, it would, they would see that the client's headers, you know, there do not track, right? And so uh, Google should be the one honoring that because it wouldn't, that's, that's interesting. I, I'd have to look a little bit more at your setup because, um, you know, what happens is uh, the client will do the request to Google's analytics, you know, server so that they will uh, re return back that script. But that they're also going to send along with that request to Google the do not track header because it's coming from them. Does that make sense? And so there's not like, there's not like a whole lot you can do about that, right? Um, but yeah, yes. Sure. Sure. Yeah. 
that good cash, right? I see. No, no that, that makes sense. I, um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I see. Yeah, the, I got you. Yeah, I, I would. I would strip the do not track header from ever hitting Drupal, right? Because Drupal's honoring that header and then not dispatching back the you know the actual scripts, right? And so I would strip that out personally, right? And then let uh, you know let Google be the one that doesn't track because they're the ones that are tracking. It's not necessarily you. Please. Okay. To make it like a unique. Yeah, yeah. So that, th that th th yeah, that's yeah, exactly. The do not track, uh, and, and, and hey, it would at least save that request, and it would be more performant, presumably. Hey, you're not getting tracked. Well, enjoy a fast website, you know, while you're at it, right? And so, um, and so that, that's that's one example of how we do a you know header manipulation. Um, you know, we've got cores headers to make sure that we're you know uh, if you're coming from certain places or you're you know you're going to certain endpoints uh, that we can give you. Uh, you know, allow origin stuff, but um, I have one that's really fun, and I think that you guys might get a kick out of, especially from a caching perspective. Um, and this is where we sh we use varnish to strip query parameters. And so the idea is this: if I come in with you know foo equals bar in the query string, that's going to be a unique URL, not only to varnish. But also to you know Drupal and Drupal cache, and, you know it, it's cache in the back end. So how do I uh, how do I maximize that? How do I maximize that hit rate? So what uh, what we do is we know that the query string parameters, say like a, a, a Google AdWords, is a good example, right? We need those parameters so that when Google Analytics fires, right, it's it does that callback from the client and all that. We need those that data, but the server doesn't need that data, and I don't need to cache that. Right, that request, I mean, it's pretty unique. And so what we'll do instead is we will strip those headers out from any kind of backend request. Also, we strip it out before we ever hit the, the hash itself. And so the result is that instead of something like this, we only ever interpret from a caching perspective or from a backend perspective, it's just the events, right? Or in this case, uh, I, I actually have a, I, I specify events here because I actually need the query string parameters, right? Because you know, page two, page three, et cetera. But for the most part, I mean, if it's just you know the cloud page or whatever have you, I, I can serve that from cache, and it doesn't matter if you know you're coming in from a, an AdWords uh, page or you're coming in from search results or something. I should be able to just deliver it to you real fast, right? And so that test is fun. Uh, in fact, uh, and so recently. We had to uh, come across this this problem. See uh, what Drupal will do, or you know, based on well, not not really Drupal. It's actually uh, Apache, the default uh, uh, HTTP access with you know, configuration for Apache. What happens is if you come in with a trailing slash, it will redirect you to the counterpart without the trailing slash, right? For pretty URLs. But what was happening is because we were stripping query parameters, the request that goes to the back end never has the query string. If you came in with a slash, it would then redirect you to the version without the slash. But it never had the query string parameters, so it just redirected you to the page without any of it. And so we were losing people as a result of it just because of you know, the unexpected slash. So uh, what you'll see here is this, uh, you know, the server is expecting that I'm actually gonna get this. Oh, up there on the bottom that the client's actually doing this request. And so I can make sure that it goes all the way through as I expected it to go through, right? And then, you know, that it will result in a miss. Uh, and so that's, that's, that's one of the interesting things there. Um, the result of that, part of that initiative is, was really to increase our, our hit rates. And so um, I am very proud to say that I am, you know, somewhere between 85 and 95% hit rate at all times. And it, it works really well, right? It's pretty cool, and you know, it, those are the kinds of fun things that you can do with Varnish, right, to really maximize it. Um, and I don't really have to mess with the hash either. That's that's the nice thing too, right? Is that just by manipulating things, kind of as in as they're received, you know, you can kind of use uh, you know the standard stuff. Messing with the hash is a little, eh, eh, yeah, you, know, you end up with a lot of 
a, a lot of different scenarios potentially. And then, and if you're not testing it, eh, okay, like really. Eh. So, uh, while I'm here, I want to talk about uh, some of the, the cool things that you can do here. First, here I, I'm expecting the, the server is expecting to get this request from the back end, right? You know, to it, right? And that's good. So you, now I have the ability to assert what's happening on the back end. But then here I can also expect what's supposed to be happening for the client, what the client's supposed to be getting back, right? And so it's nice to be able to have some uh, means of assertion at every level. But there's also one more level. How, do, how can I verify that things are happening? I mean, sure, my headers might come back and say one thing. But how can I tell things are happening concretely? And that's here. Um, what this describes is how, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different uh, counters and metrics that you can have in Varnish. If you ever use like Varnish Admin or Varnish Stat, it gives you this like, wow, of all this information, right? Um, you can also assert on that. And so in this case, I'm, all, I'm verifying that, there, that Varnish, you know, facilitated nine requests, right? Like double, triple checking, right? I can also verify that I've got two hits. But then I've also got seven misses, right? And so I, I can really set up the entire scenario and verify that things are happening exactly as I envision them, right? Um, and you can see that, uh, you know, with the different types of requests and the different, all the action that's going on with all these headers and I've got all this stuff flying, it would be nice to be able to double and triple check that, right? Especially, uh, you know, when I got to deliver it, and I'm, I'm, I told my boss that I'm done. Right? It's nice to be able to have that verification. So um, that, that's really kind of how this all operates here um, as an example. Um, let's see, what else have we got here? As you can see, I've got lots of tests. Um, I've got lots of redirects. So if you come in on certain paths, like we killed the knowledge center, you know, I want to make sure it's going to somewhere else, right? Or um, you know, it's, you know, this, it should be a 301 versus a 302, stuff like that. Um, I can also simulate back-end errors, right? So in this case, I want to make sure that um, I have this uh, synthetic response, like an inline response, and I can verify that if I go hit a, a page, and, you know, um, in this case, when I'm, you know, that I'll have this, you know, this 503 error, that I'll get that back and I'll get this response back, and, you know, and that varnish will facilitate that instead of just this ugly, you know, PHP or, you know, Apache error of some kind. Uh, do, does anybody use the, uh, the synthetic response at all for when backends are down? Yeah. You know, it seems like a good idea, but then when you see it, you're like, oh, God, right? And it's never good enough, you know? So you have to make it really pithy and funny, but it's never funny to see, <laughs> right? You know, no matter how cool it is. Um, one of the things we do, too, is um, we leverage the ACL a lot. And so, uh, you know, V... Uh, just to, uh, just to, to kind of describe it a little bit, VCL gets compiled down to C++, which is really cool. And so it, it has a lot of optimizations that it can do. And one of those things is, uh, is match IP addresses, right? And so from an ACL perspective, that, that's really nice for access control. So um, one of the things that we do is in addition to like filtering out, saying, oh, you know, you're from this IP, you can't see this resources. Like for instance, uh, you can't go to the user login page from uh, the public version of the website. You have to come in on a special URL, then we'll check your IP, and if everything is good, then you can try to log in, okay? <laughs> um, but uh, since we're doing that, and we know we have this really cool curated uh, list of IPs that we know is us, that's, you know, I, I work for a pretty big company. We've got a lot of IP addresses from a lot of different uh, offices around. Um, Instead of maintaining those in multiple places to be able to identify internal traffic, um, I just use that one, and then I tag that user as being internal or external, and I can use that stuff for different needs. Um, in this case, I actually will set uh, you know, um, a header that's only used by the back end. And so uh, uh, th that's very helpful to be able to pick up from the, ser from the server's perspective. I can say, like, hey, you know, this visitor is an internal visitor, so I can start to do all kinds of neat things, right? Um, and one of the things I do is I, I identify them um, in something called the data layer, 
uh, which uh, is, is a completely different topic. I submitted the talk. I didn't get it. That's why I got this rejected talk sticker. Right? Uh, but I've, I've given it elsewhere. But anyway, it, the data layer is related to Google Analytics. And so I can just use, the, uh, use Varnish to identify if you're internal or external. I can then bubble that information back up, and I can exclude them from being tracked in Google Analytics right, without having to go in there and like filter out traffic one at a time by IP and it's really ugly. And, you know, I don't want to do that, especially um, if uh, what I find is that uh, not, you don't always have developers administering things like Google Analytics as far as getting somebody else, <laughs> right? And I don't want to like just, here's IPs, go. You know? And so, uh, you know, I give them internal, external, it's one rule, call it a day. Uh, any questions, yeah? No? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I, I saw a hand and I was like, yes, let's do it. Yeah, please. Where is it coming from? I have not run into that particular problem, luckily. But I know that uh, if you were to use Varnish test to really, you know, bring in your VCL and then to simulate it, you should be able to to actually reproduce it, and then you can use it to track down. Right, and then you would also be able to give yourself potentially a baseline, so that you know you talk about nobody wanting to mess it with the VCL. That would be one of the cool things about establishing tests now, even though it's a little after the fact. You could at least go in there and, and, and you know simulate everything and give yourself that baseline, and then you could start to, to jack with it pretty good, right? And then um, that's what's been nice for us is that I've been able to always have this, uh, uh, you know, like for instance when we went to HTTPS, I have to account for a certain header coming in from the load balancers and all that, and I could see where it just broke everything, right? And th those tests were able to verify that. I was able to go correct all the tests and make sure that everything was handled, and I give myself that as a baseline. So, I mean, when it comes to, like, the monolithic VCL, I highly recommend, right? Highly recommend it. Also, one of the cool things, too, uh, was, uh, you know, by leveraging the include here, that demonstrates how one can include VCL from all over the place. So, for instance, uh, my default body, you'll see that I'm including the ACLs, and I can actually break that stuff up by, like, the different stage, right? And then actually have the different, you know, oh, this is how the delivery's going to go. This is what the hash is going to look like for these different. And I can actually break all that stuff out. Um, and it, it makes it a lot easier to organize instead of just, like, the, the super file, right? You know? But it ultimately results into about the same thing. And when it gets all compiled, it's all just one, you know, uh, a big major uh, joint in, in memory anyway. And so uh, that's that's uh, that's how that goes. Um, some other kind of examples I've got. Maybe one more. One more? Yeah. All right. I've got the ACL test. I can make sure that if I'm in, if I've got the right X forwarded for because we're behind a series of load balancers. I can check to make sure that you know things are coming in that it's actually picking up the right one, especially when it's a chain. I've got like six layers deep, you know, potentially, and then you know you get more and more edges out there. It can get get crazy. <laughs> that's one that's a, a fun example. Um, I've got one that I think is really neat. Uh, What happens is people come in on that, okay? It happens. It really actually happens. And so, you know, what is the back end supposed to think of that, you know? I don't want to, you know, I would rather this work and, and just assume that, you know, you know, something unexpected occurred, right? And so what we'll do is I can make sure that I get this, you know, that I'm, I'm handling that by sending a proper response to the, the page that was intended. Right, and so I'm able to use Varnish to be like, look, is there a whole bunch of slashes, <laughs> right, to do something with it, right, and, and just and strip that stuff out. And so, um, that we, you know, we ran into that. That was fun. 
Um, Sure, sure, and that's actually how that works. Let's, let's see if I can go find it real quick while I'm in here. Multiple slashes, uh, where are we? So that's actually the deliver. Uh, yeah, by the way, here you can see where I'm stripping out all the different types of headers on the way out that I don't want anybody to see, right? Yeah, 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 it's kind of fun. Um, let's see here, receive. There we go. So if I've got more than two in the URL, the I will then rewrite the location of that, and then I'll do the synthetic 751, which later later down in the VCL, it will see 751, and it will do a 302, uh, or 301 in that case, and give you the permanently moved. And so that's, that's how it works. Um, uh, um, so how does it work? Is it, Oh sure, yeah. So a synthetic response is just to say like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm going to actually like build a response back, and so I can have, um, I can have any kind of headers that I want, and, and so it's different than manipulating a response, right? It's actually just building a synthetic response. And so one of the examples would be like synth here is, um, um, what, um, what, this is how that that actually will work. I build the synthetic response, and then on the way out, um, it will see that I'm specifying a 750 or 751. It will then set these, these individual headers, and then it will just cancel right there, deliver the response back, and that's it. And so it's a super, super lightweight response, right? Nothing else, no body, nothing, just pow. You meant this, or I think you meant this, or I'm telling you you meant this, right? You know, and so there you go. And so that's how it works. Um, we, we use other uh, types of uh, synthetic responses, uh, mostly for the, uh, oops, something happened. Let's see if this is it, yeah. Here you'll see that. I'm setting the back end, you know, content type, and then I've got this synthetic, and I can describe the body's string, and then this is just a self-contained response. It's like, oops. You know, so it's helpful. And you can have it do that synthetic response as a result of the back ends going down. And so it'll be like, you know, a after a certain uh, number of uh, health checks, if it goes down, boom, just start, you know, well, serve from cache if you've got it. And if not, give them something pretty instead of, you know, uh, and something fast as opposed to just uh, doing like a pass through like a, a, a dead back end and it just, just hangs or something like that. Just give them, you know, something, something fun. Cat backs, you know. Um, and so that's, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of fun stuff in here, right? I mean, you know, and, and you know, as you can see, I've got all these really cool tests making sure that it all works the way as expected. And it allows me to organize things that requires me to uh, write my VCL in a fashion as to be included as opposed to just being like the super VCL, right, and all that. And it gives me some flexibility to have multiple environments and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, a a any more questions? Any, uh, yeah, yeah, please. And just like assert it, I, I think it's compiled. I, I think it's compiled, so I don't. I don't know that. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. But that sounds interesting, right? Just it's like a varnish test, like console, right? And you could just kind of like, oh, let's, let's see what happens. And yeah, you know, yeah, to see how it maybe how it may act under uh, under stress and stuff like that. Well, th I think that's that's interesting. I think you can actually really simulate that. Um, because the test itself, it, it, I mean, it, it fakes everything. And so you sh there should be a way to simulate that, I would think. Um, for instance, uh, you can, uh, I, I believe that you can define, um, like, this run. I think you kind of similar to how, uh, let's see if I've got an example up here. Uh, where was it? Uh, here, you can see I'm sending, like, a sequence of requests, but you can actually describe, in an, like, right here, you can repeat it in sequence and it would just, you know, keep uh, you know, repeating those client requests. There may be a way of, uh, of, of describing that or maybe, a, or this is actually responses, but I think that you might be able uh, to do the same for like a client here and actually have it just really like nail it and only have like one back end, for instance, and see if it falls over or not. But I mean, it's all, it's all gonna be one program in memory, so it'll, it'll be hard to see how that would actually run, especially with, uh, 
you know, if varnish gets, the varnish servers themselves get overwhelmed based on some kind of resource constraint like TCP limits or something, or if you're like running it on a virtual machine, kind of like, you know, how CPU gets blasted or something, I don't know, it, it would, I think that th that's, the, I think that's the interesting thing about varnish test. It's really good for testing y how your configuration, how you've written it, but, um, you know, once you leave the sandbox, right, all bets are off, right, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, uh, the servers themselves may or may not be able to stand the, uh, the test of time, right? Um, a, a couple of the, the, the talks, uh, in fact, uh, Jason's talk yesterday was talking about how, you know, uh, in a, in a post-mortem, ultimately, they just got a bigger instance, <laughs> right, you know? And it's like, well, you know, in the end, you know, even if it had been tested and all thrown on, in the end, you know, you just needed more muscle. One of those things, but um, yeah, this has been good. Any, any, any other questions? Any concerns? Was it totally awful? Sorry about the internet. Right? Uh, it seems to have come back. Yeah, please. Oh man, yeah, throw it up. Sure, but it's 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 still it's still cached, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that um, you know this is the definition of the backend array, right? And so. Based on this probe, you can really kind of uh, determine, you know, some of that criteria. Um, but I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I mean, if it's delivering like a synthetic response, right, or if it's delivering from cache, I mean, that's really based on the grace mode definition here. And I think that that would be something that uh, I believe it's in the receive. Get where exactly where it is. Let's go to the bottom. Yeah, force SSL. Here's visitor type. We have the different stuff here. Here's the handler. You should be able to, to, to um, you know, you can actually set up like kind of like tests, right? Kind of like how things will, will change here depending on how like I'll, I'll do the uncache for the TTL. You might be able to do something like that in, in the VCL and be like, well, if I know for sure I was, you know, that the back end is down and that, you know, I was serving from cache, I could probably set like a uh, hit for pass or something like that, right? Um, but you should be absolutely be able to, s to simulate that entire scenario Right, because you can fake everything in the stack, right? And so, and I, and I would recommend doing that, especially because it sounds like um, you're using varnish for some fun, right? You know, and uh, I, I would highly recommend uh, uh, taking it to the next level because then you can really start to isolate down on the, those individual units of uh, configuration you defined. And so, um, yeah, with that, I think we're really about time. So, thank you so much. This is really great. I loved it. It was almost a packed house, right? You know, it's a uh, I didn't actually have any real cash for you, right? You know what I mean? But uh, hopefully this is uh, valuable enough for you to get a promotion in some way, right? You become the, the varnish guru or in your respective domain. Um, uh, the, uh, the repo, once again, is, uh, is available on there um, oh, at some point. Let's see if it, nah, I'm blacked out. There we go. And so, yeah, me, big happy face. You can find me online. 
I'm always happy to answer questions and stuff like that if you want to play with this and see how that, that runs. Um, I don't have any of those other tests from the company online, so you'll have to forgive me. But uh, there's lots of good stuff. I also highly recommend that if you wanted to get more into the testing in terms of uh, really understanding what's happening, these, these links here are really in, invaluable. I, I want to say that, uh, no, it's actually this one. This clock one, they really go into describing how everything works, and then they'll even get into like the theory of, of asserting certain like counters and stuff like that. And, and, and at the time when I got into testing varnish, this was like the only page right out there. Um, that and then of course uh, Varnish's repo itself because they use Varnish test for all of their, their code but they get like seriously sick with it. I mean like you know because they're testing all their V mods and all that stuff and it's just like uh, you know unless you're really into C++ uh, C++ it's, it gets kind of blurry you know for, for web developers and all that stuff. But otherwise thank you very much and I hope you guys enjoy the next uh, set of sessions. Are you going to go to lunch? You guys aren't rushing away. You want to look at more? <laughs> huh? I got I got more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah.